Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a hypermature Morganian cataract. Let us observe this surgery. This is the main incision at mid limbus with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. And now, a side port is made about 3 clock hours away from the main incision on the left side. A big air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber. Tribun blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble. Here goes the tripan blue dye. Now, what is a hypermature Morganian cataract? It is as soon as you make a puncture onto the anterior capsule, milky fluid comes out. Whenever milky fluid comes out, it means a hypermature Morganian cataract. The challenges in such cases are the nucleus is free floating and it is very difficult to hold the nucleus. See what happens as I make a puncture onto the anterior capsule. Milky fluid comes out. I take a Simcoe cannula, 23 gauze Simcoe cannula, aspirate the milky fluid. In hypermature Morganian cataracts, you do not have to make a mini rexis. You do not have to make a small rexis and aspirate the milky fluid. No, it is not necessary. You can aspirate the milky fluid through the cleft made. And now inject visco, hold the capsule tag, and do a rexis. In this case, I am intentionally doing a small rexis because if I go to periphery and if it goes to genule, I will have a very tough time. The genule may be very weak in hypermature Morganian cataracts. There can be genular dialysis if the rexis goes to periphery and if I try to pull that axis. Now see how to chop this nucleus, bevel down, go into through the substance of the nucleus, bevel down. With bevel off, you cannot hold the nucleus. And now bevel sideways and chop. And I am emulsifying this free nuclear piece. Rotate the nuclear mass, bevel sideways and if the bevel is up, it is very difficult to hold such free floating nucleus. So, in such cases, you have to go either bevel down or bevel sideways. Bevel down may be dangerous. You may hold the posterior capsule if there is no nuclear mass in front. So, bevel sideways is little safer. Done. The nucleus has been managed and now I have to remove the cortex and implant an intraocular lens. Some visco is injected. Now a 23 gauze, 23 gauze Simco cannula is used to remove the cortex. We must take adequate time to remove the cortex. The side port width is such that this 23 gauze Simco can easily go in. It is about 1.8 millimeter. There is no another side port. So, 
it's okay and if the side port is 90 degree away from the main wound the astigmatism induced by the main wound is neutralized to some extent by the side port this is a totally unedited real time surgery and now we are going to implant the intraocular lens this is a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens the cartridge is little wide so I'm going to enlarge the main own little bit so the main own which was 2.8 millimeter is now about 3 millimeter and here goes the intraocular lens the lens has gone into the capsular bag the rexis is small in this case the size of the rexis is about 4.5 millimeter because as I said I didn't want to let the rexis go to periphery and entangle some jonular fibers The side port is closed, hydrating corneal stroma on either side of the stab wound. And then this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. At this time, a gentle stream of BSS goes towards the corneal endothelium and whatever visco sticks to the corneal endothelium is removed. The anterior chamber is nicely formed. The integrity of all the wounds are checked intraocular pressure is checked and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect empathy and great surgical competence